Judy Puckett. I'm the Director of Women's Ministries for Chapelgate Church. Welcome to this week's video devotional. I have two boys that are exactly two years and two weeks apart, and their birthdays are in the same month. And so because of that, their well visits always fall around the same time every year. So when the boys were little, I would schedule their well visits for the exact same day and time. So one year when the boys were, I think, about two and four, it was time for vaccinations. So the three of us headed to the doctor's office. And my youngest son, who was two, went first. And so I sat down on the table and he was on my lap and I was holding him while the doctor administered the shots. And my older son was standing there right next to us. And so the first shot came and Micah kind of winced and whimpered just a little bit. And then the second shot came and he just started screaming. And my older son is watching this whole thing. And he looks at me and he looks at the doctor and he looks at his brother and then he is out of there. He just runs to the door, opens the door of the doctor's office, takes off down the hall and he's gone. He's out of there. There's no way they are doing that to him too. In his little four-year-old brain, there was no way that he could understand how something that was so painful and so hurtful could be good for him and could be loving. He just couldn't understand it. And it reminded me of this story in the, in the book of John, chapter 11, of Lazarus and his sisters. So let's read a little bit of that together. John chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It's for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And verse 5 is the one that always hits me. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So... When he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. He heard that he was ill and he didn't go. He stayed. He allowed Mary and Martha and Lazarus to go through this season of pain and hurt and disappointment and sorrow and maybe even anger. I mean, later on in the text, Martha says, Lord, if you had been here, it wouldn't have been like this. He wouldn't have died. So why? Why did he allow that to happen? And, and you know, I think sometimes we ask the same questions. Why? Why, Lord? Why are you allowing this to happen? And it's hard for us to believe that something bigger and more beautiful could come out of our pain. And yet that's exactly what happened in this story. Later on, Jesus goes on to raise Lazarus from the dead and to display that he is the resurrection and the life and his power and his glory are fully on display. But sometimes when we're in the middle of a season that's really hard and really painful and really disappointing, it can be hard for us to believe that God is still good and that God is still sovereign. And so that in those moments, we really need our foundation to be in the scriptures. So, and I love, that's why I love Psalm 25, verse 10. And it says this, All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful. Not most of them, not some of them, not all but a few, but all the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who are his. And that's really encouraging for our hearts when we're hurting and when we're disappointed and when we're struggling. And Psalm 29 verses 10 and 11 says this, the Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. He's still sovereign. Through all of this season of coronavirus, he is still sovereign. Psalm 25 tells us that he's always good. And Psalm 29 tells us that he is still sovereign. And verse 11 goes on to say, may the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. You know, just this week I heard this really great story of how something that is, was so painful and so hurtful and so disappointing turned out to be something really beautiful. This group of seniors in, te in Texas 
at Fredericksburg High School. I don't know if you've heard this story, but all throughout their high school career, those four years, they had been raising money in order to take a senior trip to Six Flags in Texas. And of course, because of coronavirus, they can't do that. So what this senior class decided to do was take that money that they had raised and donate it to a local food bank. $10,850 they donated to this food bank. And this is what the vice president of the class said. Her name is Amy Dittmar, and she says this, I think we're all just kind of hungry for something good. Knowing that we were able to do something this good and this impactful, just seeing people smile right now is just the best thing ever. The look on the woman from the food pantry's face when we donated the money, that was just so worth it all the way. Something that was so hurtful and so disappointing turned out to be something so beautiful. And right now, our confidence is in the fact that God takes things that seem so broken, that are broken and are hurtful, and he makes them beautiful. My prayer is that we can believe that he is always good and always sovereign and that he can take the most broken things and make them beautiful. Let's pray. God, thank you that you are sovereign and you are good and that our confidence can be in those things about you and in your word that are strong and true and faithful. Give us hearts that believe that you can take broken things and make them beautiful. In Jesus' name, amen.